Five most unlikely wild animal relationships. Symbiosis is the name for two animal or plant species engaging in any kind of relationship. Some symbiosis is beneficial to one party without hurting the other, and then it's called commensalism. Other times one party gets its benefits by hurting the other, and it's called parasitism. However, sometimes both animals benefit from being friends. This is Wild Ciencias, and today we will present you the five most unlikely wild animal relationships. Before we start, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you're the first one to see our new video. Wolves and Ravens Grey wolves, Canis lupus, are one of the most widely distributed carnivores, inhabiting North America, Europe, and Asia. They can weigh up to 175 pounds, 80 kilograms, stand 33 inches, 85 centimeters tall at shoulder height, and reach 63 inches, 1.6 meters in length. While they're social animals, Usually living in packs ranging from 5 to 10 individuals, they don't tend to form relationships with other species. The only exception to that are common ravens, Corvus carex, which are large blackbirds that are found in many different parts of the world. They inhabit most of the world, from the Far East and Scandinavia, to North Africa and North America. They are known for their intelligence and are often ranked as the smartest bird species. Ravens can weigh up to 4.4 pounds, 2 kilograms, be up to 26 inches, 67 centimeters long, and have a wingspan of 51 inches, 1.5 meters. They're absolutely enormous birds in relation to other corvid species, so it should come as no surprise that they're the species that manage to befriend wolves. So, what is the relationship between these two completely different animals? Well, ravens will often follow wolves and watch them hunt. Eventually, when the wolves kill an animal, the ravens will eat the carcass because they are no strangers to eating carrion. This benefits the wolves because they don't have to worry about other scavengers taking their food. And it benefits the ravens because they get a free meal. This mutualistic relationship goes even further because ravens have been observed to play with wolves and even form strong connections to wolf pups that grow up beside their raven companion. Aphids and Ants Aphids are small plant-sucking insects that are found in most parts of the world. There are about 5,000 species, most of which cause serious problems for farmers and gardeners. You see, aphids suck the sap from plants, which weakens the plant. The plant sap allows aphids to secrete honeydew, a sticky sweet substance that ants enjoy indulging in. There are more than 10,000 ant species, but several have been observed to herd aphids and farm their honeydew for food. For example, the European yellow meadow ant, Lassius flavus, is known to carry aphid eggs from one colony to the other, literally breeding them for food. So the relationship is simple. Aphids get protection and pay for it with their honeydew, providing food for the ants. Regardless of the simplicity, it's for sure one of the most unique animal relationships in the wild. Ostriches and Zebras Common ostriches, Struthio camelus, are native to Africa and are the heaviest and tallest extant bird species. Like most of the biggest birds, they're flightless, meaning their wings aren't developed well enough to be capable of flight. They can weigh up to 340 pounds, 154 kilograms, while standing up to 9 feet, 2.75 meters tall. Zebras are native to Africa as well, and they're best known for their white coats that are adorned with black stripes. There are actually three different species of zebra. The plains zebra, Equus quago, which is the most widely distributed species, found in many regions of eastern and southern Africa. The mountain zebra, Equus zebra, 
which is the least distributed species, found only in some areas in Western Africa, and the Grevy zebra, Equus grevy, which is the largest zebra species, weighing up to 950 pounds, 430 kilograms, and standing up to 63 inches, 1.6 meters tall at shoulder height. While zebras can form gigantic herds of up to 1,000 individuals, they live in smaller family units, consisting of anywhere between 5 to 20 individuals. Ostriches are similar and sometimes gather up to form huge flocks of up to 100 birds, but usually go about their day in families of 10. So, what is the relationship between these two animals? Well, zebras have well-developed hearing and smelling senses while they suffer from terrible eyesight. On the other hand, ostriches are blessed with insane eyesight, making them see moving objects from as far as 1.8 miles, 3 kilometers away. To put it simply, ostriches and zebras cover each other's weaknesses, helping to protect themselves from predators. It's also thought that zebras can benefit from the ostrich's size and raw kicking power because the larger bird can scare off predators that the zebras wouldn't be able to handle on their own. Hippos and Oxpeckers The hippopotamuses, Hippopotamus amphibious, are massive semi-aquatic mammals that are found in sub-Saharan Africa. They're the third largest land mammal after elephants and rhinos, and they can weigh up to 3,300 pounds, 1,500 kilograms. Oxpeckers consist of two bird species, the yellow-billed oxpecker, Bufagus africanus, which is found in most of sub-Saharan Africa, and the red-billed oxpecker, Bufagus erythrorhynchus, which prefers to live in eastern Africa. They're the only members of their family and are often spotted perched on the backs of the hippos. Why hippos aren't bothered by these fellas? Well, it's because oxpeckers don't just stand on their backs doing nothing. No, oxpeckers actually take care of hippos by picking out parasites that have infested the hippos. It's been observed that a single adult oxpecker can take as many as 100 ticks or over 1,300 larvae. So, to put it simply, the bird gets the food and the hippo stays healthy. This relationship is thought to have evolved over millions of years, and it's even speculated that the oxpeckers have even learned to recognize the individual hippos they live with. A similar relationship happens between oxpeckers and other large mammals, including rhinos, zebras, and giraffes. Cattle, egrets, and water buffalo have also been observed engaging in a similar relationship. Clownfish and sea anemones There are over 30 fish species that are commonly called clownfish. They range from tiny 3-inch, 7.6 centimeters long species to much larger ones exceeding 6 inches, 15 centimeters in length. Clownfish can be found in reefs and lagoons located in tropical waters, including the warmest parts of the Indian and Pacific Oceans and even the Red Sea. They form one of the most unique animal relationships with a fascinating animal called a sea anemone. This is the name of about a thousand species of polyps which inhabit the same waters as the clownfish, but unlike fish, they don't swim around the warm waters. They live in a single location attached to stable corals or rocks. So, what is the relationship between these two animals? Well, sea anemones are actually predators, which can sting and paralyze their prey with neurotoxin. The anemone stings whenever another animal touches their tentacles, so clownfish are using them as protection from predators. But wait, how do clownfish not get stung themselves? Well, they have a mucus layer that has evolved to specifically protect them from sea anemone stings. Moreover, clownfish also get to eat carrion that was left uneaten by the anemone. In exchange for shelter and food, clownfish thanks anemones by defecating. You see, anemone eats clownfish feces, 
getting essential nutrients from them. That was it for today's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave your thoughts and suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and check out our previous videos.